This is the first of three lecture segments in which we'll combine what we've learned so far about fork, exec, dupe to, and pipe, and create a simple command shell application called Minishell. Now first, let's look at what Minishell does. It provides a simple version of the Unix command line interface. I've got an executable of it here that I'll run. It uh, lets you type commands and command line arguments with optional file redirection for input and output. Now let's uh, try that out here. Um, I'm going to uh, first uh, dump the contents of a file emails uh, text. You can see what's in there. And then we could do a grep command on that, looking for lines that contain C Staley. And get only those lines out. So that's a couple of quick examples. Now the program also lets you pipe one command's output into the input of the next, just like the standard command line does. And let's do an example of that as well. So maybe I want to take the uh, output of that grep and run it through the sort command so I can get it in the sorted order. And there it is with alpha first and beta second. Okay. Now, a brief review of Unix command shells may be useful at this point. You may have been under the impression that Unix command line processing is provided by the operating system kernel, but that's not so. Nothing in the Unix kernel covers commands and redirection and so forth. The kernel supplies only the system calls needed to set up a series of processes with pipes and redirection and command line arguments. Some user program must actually read the command line and call the needed fork, exec, pipe, etc. calls to set up a child process to run a command like sort or grep or what have you, or perhaps a piped series of child processes, each running a different command with interconnecting pipes and or redirection to or from files. Now such a program is called a shell in Unix terminology, and it is this program, which is perhaps 100,000 lines of C code, that you interact with during a Unix text command session. This shell program is started by whatever program handles your login process. That could be a terminal monitoring program for a hardware terminal, or these days more likely an SSH server program for remote connections. When the shell program ends, your login session is over. Now there are several different versions of the Unix command line shell. The earliest version, which is called the Born shell, was written for the original early 1970s Unix systems. Better versions have since been built, but they all follow the same command line syntax, more or less. A series of one or more commands and arguments, and if there is more than one command, each command in the series is separated by a pipe symbol, uh, and it has its output piped to the input of the next in the series. And so um, here's a quick question to refresh your memory on Unix command lines if needed. What does the following thing do? Type it here as well. Try to get the first part of it. Look up uh, the relevant manual entries for grep, sort, unique, and wc if you need to. We'll have a redirection there at the end. So, coming back from a uh, from a pause there, the grep command, as you know, searches for lines containing c's daily from file emails.txt. That output is piped into the sort command, which, absent any command lines, in command line arguments, sorts its input and prints the sorted result onto its output. But that output is in turn piped to the unique command, which removes any duplicates, any adjacent duplicate lines. Uh, the duplicate culled output of unique then goes into the WC program, which, with the dash L option, counts the number of lines, and puts that result then redirected into count. Assuming emails.txt is a file of emails, one per line, the whole command counts the number of unique emails in that file that refer to csdaily and leaves that count in the file count. I'll dump count here real quick to demonstrate that. Two such lines. Now, piping of one command into another is a major Unix feature and allows creation of complex actions by gluing together a series of simpler commands. Now, as the review says, a typical shell program is uh, a C program of as many as 100,000 lines. We'll be reading through a simplified version, our mini shell, of under 200 lines. 
but it will be able to set up and run a command line as we just showed. Okay, so with that prolog, let's take a look at the uh, minishell.c code. Our first slide shows only the basic structures for minishell, basic data structures. Uh, the next two lectures will do the rest of it. So, to begin with, minishell keeps track of command line arguments like dash l or c's daily. Executable names, grep for instance, also count as command line arguments. Remember, they're the first argument in the list. We'll be making linked lists of command line arguments, so we'll need a suitable node type for such lists. And arg on lines 13 through 16 is that type. Each arg node holds one string, as you can see of at most 100 character length, and a pointer to the next arg on the list. And we'll also need a struct to represent a command, which means one executable name, possibly followed by argument and possibly file names to redirect to or from. A full command line comprises one or more commands separated by pipes. And we'll represent such a line with a linked list of commands. So the command type on lines 19 through 25 has, as you can see, a count of the command line arguments, a list of the actual arguments, names for input, and output redirect files, if any, and a pointer to the next command so the commands may be put into a linked list. There's a question two for you. When, if ever, would you expect field args, which is the head pointer to the argument list, to be null? Coming back from a pause there. Uh, the answer actually is never there will always be at least one command line argument, right? Which is the executable name. As the uh, code comment here uh, indicates, a uh, number of arguments including executable name. Okay, there are several utility functions used by the rest of the program to work with args and with commands. Let's look over those briefly. New arg on lines uh, 28 through 35 here allocates a new arg with content uh, given by stir here. And uh, you can kind of read that through fairly readily yourself. New command on lines 38 through 48 does the same for a new command. It creates just one arg for the executable name, which is passed in as cmd, and it sets the input and output file names to empty string. Additional command line arguments and in or out file names may be added later to the command. And then delete command, lines 51 through 60, deletes a command, in particular walking down its arg list and deleting all the args. It assumes that the command is the first in a list of commands and it returns the command that follows it in the list or null if this is the last command in the list. So question three here. If I had a list of commands and they were pointed to by head pointer cmd list, how would I delete them all using delete command in just a two line loop? Coming back from a pause, what you'd want is, while command list is not equal to null, while there is something on the list, then command list equals delete command of command list. So the delete command is sort of meant to be used by passing a head pointer to it and then assigning the result back into the head pointer, effectively removing one node, the first node, from the list. Now we have two major functions yet to go. Read commands, which reads in a pipe-separated sequence of commands and returns a pointer to a list of command structs representing them, and run commands, which sets up a series of child processes to run the commands in a command list, with pipes going from each process to the next. Uh, we'll go over these in uh, the next two lecture segments, but first let's take a look at the overall main down here on lines 175 through 188. The line 179 loop continues until EOF on standard input. And it prompts the user with the greater greater and then calls read commands. 
If there are any commands, then read commands returns a non-null head pointer to a list of commands, which we then run via run commands. Read commands returns null if it hits EOF without seeing a command, and so we don't call run commands in that case. Then we delete the list of commands using the code just described and discussed under question 3. And that's about it.